first thing I've got to do is cut a couple of holes up in these top corners. I'll film what I can. It's going to be awkward up there though. I've just belted a wedge in at the top there for now. Cut the other one out. I've cut myself two channels, chipped off the bit in the middle and then drilled it. You see I've got a nice straight line now. Right, I'm going to fix this one in. I'm going to put one there. I'd like to have had it slightly higher, but I want to go centre to brick. Same up there. I'd like to have put it there, but centre to brick's fine. And I'm not going to plumb this. I'm going to put a level on it. I'm going to work off the brick. This house isn't plumb. Lint lint level. So like I say, I'm just working to this brick line. And I'll measure off there. Well, I already have. So I've measured off there. And I'll work to that. If I put it in plumb and the house in plumb, it'll just look wrong. I'm going to use one of these to mark it. Now I've got to drill a 12mm hole, I'm going to drill a, drill a smaller one first as a pilot It'll make this going in easier, I'll be able to get it straighter So that's the little hole bit stiff but big hammer will get that in. Alright, top one's in. These you just want to wind it back so that you just don't got any thread. Make sure that that isn't flared out. Big hammer. Tighten that up properly. Well, that's not going nowhere now. Right, I'm going to pack these up with some slate. The slate has got a grain to it. It'll break that easy, that way easily, but not that way. So I'm going to cut these, rather than trying to break them. Now you can see, I can just about get that last tile in, but I'm going to get some cement in around here first, get it in down there. You can see, just get those tiles in, and then there's almost room for one more, which I'll whack in. When I put that in, I'll put it in between one. Like that. When I hit this, it'll go in between those easier. I don't need much. This is missing sand, it's quite fine sand. I want a mix that's quite cementy, but not too cement because that makes it brittle. But I want it to be quite hard so that'll get a dash of cement in it. 
just normal cement this. So I'm going to put, put about that much in. Give it a good mix first. And then add some water. Not much. Don't want it too sloppy. Uh, that's how wet I want it. So this it's mouldable, but it still holds its shape. Don't know if you can see, but there's the frog of the brick, the cavity that's supposed to take cement. So I'll put some cement on so that I fill that gap up. I've got some down the sides. I'm just going to fill that frog up underneath. Right, I've got that one in between that one. It's a bit tight. I think the cement's pushing it down a bit, but I'll carefully hit that one in there. Get it as tight as I can. Right, so they're all wedged in there. That one broke off a bit, but it's up there. So I'll point it in now, put some cement over the face, clean it all up. Give this a wipe down with a sponge. Right, I've cleaned them up a bit. These timbers got two coats of clear treatment on them, so I'm going to put a little bit in these holes. And I'll cut them off at later now. Right, this is my wall plate. This is the centre. And up here, that is the centre between these two. I've used this stick just to transfer that up use my level I'm going to put a screw in the middle screw at each end so I'm going to screw my wall plate on mark my little hole screw it on and then use that as my straight edge to cut back and remove this render I want to screw I want to fix back to bare brickwork got my pouch on today I haven't worn this for ages I like this long pocket get big tools in it this little one for little stuff I like the drill pouches, cheap and nasty but they work. I've had this since I started, my very first boss gave me this one. Right, I've just screwed that on the top there, use that as a straight edge, take it off, remove the render and screw it back on, then I can get some bolts in it. Right, this is my wall plate. I've removed the render up there but before I put it on, I'm going to mark out my rafters. I've got one on each end. These are 44 mil, so 45, let's call it. And then between there and the other one at that end is 2360. So 2360. Oh, I'm going to do is deduct a total of four of them, which is 175. So, 175 off that, 5, 8 from 16 is 8, 2, 1, 2, 1, 8, 5. So what I'm going to do is divide that by 5, so 2, 1, 8, 5, I've got 4 rafters, 5 spaces, so divide that by 5. That's not four twenty one eight three fifteen three five five seven five thirty five. So I mark four thirty seven and use an off cut which I've got here. It's the same thickness as that. I mark 437, put one of these, 437, put one of these, 
we'll work my way down then I'll transfer these marks to my beam this is my cross beam on it the little saw I cut that in one go 60mm which I'm happy about I'm just going to transfer these marks you could just make one line and an X next to it but it's safer to do it that way you see the bow in there it's pretty straight the other way but it's got a bow in it that way I've decided to put that bow in woods then if it does push out at all the roof it's going in the right direction if I put the bow that way it's just going to get worse is that bow I've just just roughly fixed it back with a screw work out where where my bolts are going to go into some decent bricks I'm going to go into the middle of a brick I'm going to try to anyway so one at each end one in the middle one in between them I think I'll drill them put some treatment on the other side I right, just using the old screws it's on temporarily I'm just going to drill straight through these I didn't countersink them because I want the full width of the wood uh, these holes are slightly off centre so that I can get into the centre of a brick Uh, that's all bolted on got this beam in, in position and I'm trying to make a decision whether to screw it in spike it like that or whether to get a couple of screws up from underneath straight up right, I went with a simple option one in each side Right, that's screwed on, it's time for the rafters. I'm putting my plum cut on this end and a bird's mouth about here, a seat cut. Now it doesn't want to be more than a third through the timber. This is 70mm timber, so a third of that is about 46 I think, if my calculations are right. This is a piece of 2B1, it's 44mm, so this is what I'm going to use. Slightly more than a third. But I'm going to do the simplest method I know to get my pitch. Right, so I've taken my 2 big one to there. From there, I can work out my pitch. Right, now that I've worked out my pitch, I'll measure from this top point to this edge here. So from the top point there to this edge here. Right, that measurement's 847, so from the point, I've got my plum cut there, 847. I've got my piece of 2 one that was attached to my level. That way. that point there is the plum cut again and I need to square that across there I'm just going to use this to square as anything I've got
I'll cut that out. I'm just going to cut it with jigsaw with a thick blade in it. I want it to try and t stay square. I don't expect these joints to be perfect, but I want them as close as. That's the side I marked. This is the back side. It's very slightly out. Alright, so that's quite a good fit. So now I can decide where to cut it off for the eaves and use this as a template to make all the rest. Before I do that, I'll offer this up to the others. You see that bow? This is at the other end. And I've got a very good fit here as well, which is good. So that one, with my pencil lines on this side, marks my template. I'm going to turn it over and just, I don't know, make a mark to remind me. Because the jigsaw blade will wonder a little bit, I want to work off that line that's there, not this edge. I want to work off that edge. So I'll offer that up. Cut, cut six of them. Right, this end one, put a screw in the top just because if I'd put it through there, it'd probably come out there. So I'll put one in there. Like I say, I would have normally put two in each side. Same on the bottom, one in the top one in there but then when it came to it I just I put one in the top of these one in the side I haven't got a lot of timber to work with so putting two in might have just weakened that behind there being a bit lazy as well it's easier to stick one in the top same with all these put one down the side could have put another one in I'll put one in the top instead and they all fit fairly well one or two little gaps in the middle here that could be because this timber's bent but the top's sat down so it must be this wall plate that's just a little cockled it's getting painted it'll look okay from underneath right when I worked out the spacing for those I was working on about 400 mil centre to centre but I wanted them even so to get them even you saw me put the gap in between which was 437 plus the 44 mil which is 437, 470, about 480 centre to centre if I'd made it smaller than 400 mil and got another one in even it up it, it, they were just too tight together so centre to centre about 480 but I was working on around 400 this is matchboard that's going on the top. V groove down. It's hard work working on your own sometimes. Just put a screw in there. And this floor clamp. So that I can go to that end and work that out. Get it all straight. I've got another clamp that I'll get on that end. And I can get it nailed. These are 50mm galvanised ring nails. Just put a row straight up. I marked where my joists are. Just got a clamp on just to keep this edge down while I nail it. Sound good. Right, 
Wow. That phone just took a dive off the roof. Seems fine. I'm just going to screw a couple of buttons on just to keep this in place for now. Right, I've just framed and boarded that. 9mm WBP ply. I'll put the face on. Nothing out special about that. Now I'll do the barge board. Uh, I've just screwed that on, let it fly past. I've cut the plumb cut at the top, but I need to scribe that to the wall. Then when that's fitted, I'll trim that end off. Right, I'm just going to scribe this in. When I put this in, it's going to be travelling in that direction. So I need to put my scribers at that sort of direction. And I'll have to measure that distance there and transfer it over to there, which will be about there. So it'll get cut somewhat like that. That distance there is the same as that distance there. And I just need to take the corner off at wires. Right, like that. I'll just put the screw back in so that I can trim this end. So I can mark it to trim it. But I'll put some I'll put some treatment on the end of there. And then it'll get corked in with some frame sealant. Right, I rushed that a little bit, but I put treatment on all the ends, and all these screws go into some decent timbers. Put another one up there, these will get filled and painted. I've got to decide whether it's going to have another 45 there. But it's just got very dark. It's bright over there, but it's coming that way. Right, I just cut the edge of them tiles down using diamond blade and mangle grinder there. I've got to cut a line across the top for the flashing. I use my little one for that. So I don't know if you can see, I've drawn a line with a sharpie. I'm going to go under the sill there. I'll make one cut with the thin blade and then I'll open it up with this wider blade. Right, that's cut in. I went in as deep as the ground will let me, which is about an inch. Before I go, I'll just put some filler in the holes. So that'll be dry for tomorrow. And what I've done is, when I made this, I considered making this around like that. Because I think it's a bit of a water trap, is this V that was there. So using a big drill bit. I'll just put a bit of a round in the bottom and when it's dry I'll sand it so that it slopes outwards on either way then the rain will shed off it instead of sitting there in that V Right, time to start putting tiles on Just got to finish off this It sits underneath, this is breathable membrane, it sits underneath these buttons but I don't want it sitting under that one because you end up with a with a well like that, and water will collect on there. This is waterproof, this stuff. So, what I'm going to do is, I've got a board there. I'm going to just sit this board on like that, up to the end, of course. And this felt will run off this breathable membrane. Any water that gets under here will run off and into the gutter.
this bottom button's doubled up. These are just single because there's no tile sitting underneath this bottom edge. You end up with a gap like I've got there. These haven't got the tile under them, so. So I'll tack that in place. This is quite cool. Little felt nail, put this little 19mm felt nails in. I got this from America, it's a bit old and tired. It's got a rivet there holding it together. I've got it set at its minimum minimum depth setting so I'll just whack them with hammer a little bit. gonna make some cement to go down the end of the tiles. I've got all sorts of mixing pedals but sometimes the easiest is just to use a stick but don't try turning it like that. Hold the top steady and turn the bottom. I'm gonna fix these tiles on with aluminium nails. Copper ones don't cost much more but aluminium's what I had in the shed so that'll be okay. All right, the tiles are on. Pointed up the edge there. Time for some blood. I'm going to use this. I've got to create a lip along the top edge there to go in that groove. So I'm going to use this. It's got a groove cut in it. A slot cut in it. I'm going to use that to help me create that lip. I think I'll have to do that up there. I want to do it in one piece. There is a minimum sort of length that you should do and then have a joint to allow for expansion but I don't want a joint in it. Right, this works okay. I think in future I'd make a wider cut, that's if I ever do this again. Help it get over little kinks like that. I've just managed to get that end in with a wedge, a wooden wedge, just to hold it in place. Every time I lift it, it moves a little bit, bends a bit. I'm just going to have to try and work my way along, pushing it into place. Right, that was fun. I think I've got it in. I've got some clips to go in here. these clips to go in in there I'll have to hammer them in I don't know how many of them clips you're supposed to put in but I'm putting loads in I've got a bag of 50 so Right, I'm halfway through topping that lid round. I'm working left to right so that I can press on one while I hammer the next one, working my way along. I've got a mallet, don't know what you call it, a paddle for moulding lead somewhere. I can't find it, I was too tight to buy a new one. So, bit of wood, screw to another bit of wood. Just tap, 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 tap. 
boring as hell but I'm getting there I'm thinking that I should have returned the ends there put a clip in the end it's done now tap 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 more right, that's all on got to point this up I've got a little hod, little trowel but of course the handle won't fit under there so I'll put some on the board, offer it up and use my trowel just to push it off push it off the board into the groove right that'll do right that's it for now the filler that I put on yesterday is still wet that dried but they're going to do that, they're going to sand it and then it's going to get painted black so I'm going to put the gutter on afterwards it'll be easier and that's it for now old van goes in for its MOT tomorrow and I think it'll fail dramatically I might make a video about some of that be more like a blog, weblog, vlog, whatever they call it. Yeah, that's it.